Hi, today I'm going to talk about, I guess, a little bit of a controversial uh, subject. It's about spraying your stone fruits. Uh, if I live in southeast Texas, we get 60 inches of rain a year, sometimes more. Uh, we've gotten over 100 inches of rain before. Last year, we got 70 inches of rain the first six months of the year. And I had total meltdown with all the brown rot, totally wiped out all the fruit trees, all the stone fruits, the peaches, the plums, totally wiped out. Uh, I, I might have got 99% of it, you know, was bad, and that didn't count the worms. So today we're not going to do the worms. I haven't seen any out yet. So you look for that little crescent moon with a dot, and at that point you know that it's got a worm in it, so go ahead and spray the rest of them. Uh, so I don't like to spray unless I have to, so I'm going to wait on that. Uh, I use mouth, I've been using mouth ion, but you don't want to do that late in the evening. It would be a good time today, but I don't see any, so there's no use spraying anything if you're not seeing any damage. Uh, but I am spraying for the brown rot. Now what I use is called Infuse. I'll let you look at that. Uh, I've got it off of Amazon and it works pretty good. It takes two tablespoons, I always write that on the side, two tablespoons, two tablespoons per gallon. So I put four, four tablespoons in that two gallon sprayer. Before that, I will add a, a tablespoon per gallon of vinegar and that's to get the pH down because most sprays your uh, of your synthetic sprays do not like uh, alkaline it, it, the alkaline pH will break it down faster in some time a matter of minutes uh, sometimes it's like 20 minutes it's already deactivated so go ahead if you can get that pH down with it with the uh, uh, vinegar and also use a sticker now I think one of the best stickers on the market is that one there I had to order that through a chemical company. But if you have to go to tractor supply, they have some too. But this is extremely sticky, so if we get that big rain, we're supposed to get two inches of rain. Hopefully, it'll keep the, the chemical on it. And basically, do not get this sprayer like this, okay? it's This is way too short. You want to got a longer arm on it. It's the only one I've got. The other one I've sprayed some, had sprayed some uh, invasive brush, so it's got uh, could have chemical residues in it, so I don't ever use the uh, sprayer that you use for brush brush or for, for killing weeds. Don't spray it on your fruit trees. Get you another sprayer. And this one, you want to make sure it's shook, shook up good. And you have to pump it up. Read your label. There is a pre-harvest interval, and it's about, it's at least two weeks, if not a month that you're supposed to spray it, that you're supposed to leave the fruit on the tree before you harvest it. So a lot of your damage can be done now and then you'll see it later. Because what that fungus will do is it'll get on, that brown rot will get on the fruit and it'll just sit there and right before it starts ripening, then it takes off and starts producing the spores and ruins the fruit. So don't sit there and wait till you see some uh, ruin because at that point, once you see the brown rot, you're done for the year. You know, there's really not much you spray in then because it's already on the fruit. But anyway, the game is, Spray it away from you. Get off all the leaves. It is a it is. It gets inside the the tree itself. So I can't think of the word right now. And just wet the whole tree. You don't have to soak it, but you do want to get, as they say, wet too too drippy. You just want to wet the leaves. And this is going to take a lot of chemical because it's a big tree. Now this is a Gulf Rose uh, plum tree. It's a very good tasting plum. I really like it. Uh, we got some trees that we were looking at earlier on the peach trees. They only had one or two fruits on it. To me, that's not worth spraying. Uh, now, there, there could be some people saying, well, if you spray all of them, you might reduce the overall impact of the spray. I don't know. I know I've thought about it, and I do plan on, there is a fruitgrowers.org, a form, uh, gardening forum, dealing with fruit trees. And they've got a lot of people on there, both organic and, and conventional growers. Really good place to ask those questions because I'm a home gardener, okay? Some of those guys are actually paid to go out and take care of different things. I will say that with the, uh, if you're saying you want to go all organic, you don't want to spray any synthetic pest, uh, herbicides or pesticides, you probably don't want to be growing stone fruit in southeast Texas because you're going to have to. And I'm not saying that to be 
malicious, but even a guy that was organic said he had to go with synthetic fungicide because just not one that will control brown rot. And really, there's not very many synthetics that will, that will control the brown rot. So now I will say, if you're a youth gardener, no, there's not any not any trees around, you'll get by with it for anywhere from three to five years without using any any uh, spray of any kind a lot of times. Uh, what it is, the fungicide hadn't found you yet, and you'll be okay. But somehow, some way, and that guy said he did one for five years, did not have any problems with brown rot because he was picking up all the fruit, any fruit that had any damage on it, he was taking care of it, he was cleaning up the leaves, doing everything you're supposed to do. And that fifth year he got wiped out. And from that time forward, he had to change because that those spores are in the ground, in the air, and they're gonna find it. So Again, if you want to, you know, play with it for a while and say, well, I'm going to go till I get the fun. And once it's there, it's there. Last year, I was busy. My wife was in the hospital for several months. And our, we was in Houston for, she's only in the hospital, I think, for three weeks. Uh, but she had to stay up close for uh, several months. So I was coming back and forth, and I did not get to spray. And like I say, I was annihilated with them. But I had such a fruit load. I mean, I had fruits everywhere. And all of them were ruined. It was kind of heartbreaking. Heartbreaking, but you know, that's, if you can't take care of stuff, that's gonna happen to you. And it might happen anyway. I'm not sure how effective <clears throat> next year's, you know, this year's gonna be, because I had so much last year. And I didn't, you're still blooming. Uh, but it's got fruit on it too. When you start, it's usually when the fruit gets about the size of a dime. Uh, this is varied, some of them's, some of them's bigger. This is uh, one of the uh, improved Chickasaws. Uh, probably owed them. And like I say, this is so big, it's gonna be hard to get it all. But I'm gonna try. Now I'm gonna spray this stuff on here. And I do need to get in here and open this thing up, cut some of this stuff out. Uh, I know I've said this in a lot of videos. And one day I will. You know you screwed up when you have to use a chainsaw to do your uh, uh, thinning and do your pruning. But that's what I'm gonna have to do. And I should have done it in the winter time because I won't have all the contamination. But a lot of things you should do, and sometimes you just can't do them. Now this tree here, I'm not gonna spray because it's not ready yet. You know, it's got the blooms, but uh, it does have the leaves to suck the, the moisture in, so I'll be wasting chemical. So I'm not gonna be spraying it. And that's what I'll be doing for the rest of the rest of this afternoon, rest of this evening. And best time to spray is right before the rain. Uh, you're better off to have it on there because <clears throat> for fungicides to grow and get started, they need about 14 to 15 hours of wet uh, of of the surface being wet. What's going to happen tonight? We're going to have to do this, this. You know, as soon as the sun goes down, they're going to be wet and. It's been wet all night and it's gonna rain all day tomorrow. So I can have probably 24 or 36 hours of damp on the on the leaves. So it's best to do that. Spray every 21 days. Sometimes you gotta spray a little bit earlier if you get, like I said, we get that big rain, you know, and it looks like there may be another rainfall. I may spray once again, double up a little bit on it. Uh, but what you don't want to do is, you know, the, the the second best time to first best time to spray. Best time to spray is right before rain. Second best is right after the rain. So don't spray it during the rain because it'll all wash off. But anyway, I hope this, this helps. And like I say, don't spray unless you have to, but sometimes you have to. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you later.